Haven't done this in a hot second, so let's cook. Oh, what we got for the review? Oh, oh, right. Let me tell you a story. What's going on, my music files, my DJs, my track lovers everywhere across the entire landscape? My name is V, you know, the nomadic DJ back in the booth once again to give you guys another music review where it's going to be a little bit of a weird one because people are like, so you going to be ending up the none like Joshua stuff? What you got cooking up in the background? What you been doing in the meantime? And are you trying to flex or something? Well, personally, bro, no, nah, I'm not trying to flex. I mean, does this look like guns to you? Second of all, what I've been cooking up is just trying to discern how to go about this review because there have been two different tracks from this one Zelda dubstep rap that Josh has done. I mean, there's the original one that he did while back in his college days. I am the chosen one, the one to ride in the golden sun. The only one who never had a fairy growing up. And then there's the one that he did during the 2010s era. I'm the chosen one, the one the guys have spoken of. Yeah, the omen does, we incarnated to overcome. It's a little bit of a stretch to kind of go into the whole thing about, oh, well, what do we kind of do with all this shit over here? I mean, like, what the fuck we gonna do now? It's like a six year gap of 2011 and 2017. What we gonna do, man? And will you stop flexing? It's like, bruh, personally, I'm trying to tell you, I ain't flexing. These ain't guns, man. I may be able to one-two pop y'all in the face, but I'm not gonna try and do all that all this sort of shit in the music review. Second of all, the way I wanna go about this is the same way that this whole track is based off of. Where, if y'all already know, congratulations! If not, it's time for nerd history! <laughs> where, this whole track comes from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, where the first half of the game is with Child Link, the other half of the game was with Adult Link. Kind of like that whole dichotomy about where does the child part go, where does the adult part go, all that sort of stuff in the whole mindset of what can we do about this review here? What can we do about these tracks over there? Why is V very energetic? Well, that's because I love getting back in the motherfucking booth to record all this shit for y'all. So, the way I'm trying to break this up is the first one I kind of feel would be what Kid Link would be for this rap. Nervous, shy, unsure about where to go about things, and just trying to do the bare minimum with the beat because they're kind of like, oh, I don't know, will the fans really like it if I do this? Will the fans really like it if I do this kind of flow right here? What are they gonna do if I just do it my own way? Oh, I'm so nervous. And then the sequel to it, I feel would be what Adult Link would be doing. Because it's more bombastic, it's more confident, it's more like, I'm gonna take this flow the way I want to, I'm gonna go ahead and cook this whole thing up, make it seem like it's my own little stew pot about how I'm gonna make this thing go all flamey and shit, how I'm gonna do all this stuff, make this the hottest track this summer, oh my god, what the fuck am I doing? And that's how you want to do it with your whole core progression as an entertainer, as a rapper, as a musician, as a singer-songwriter, all that beautiful shit in the artscape. So, if that's all the case, do both of these kind of do justice to what I'm trying to do as an analogy? Well, yes and no. Why? Well, first let me calm down. Okay, I'm good. So, the first one. I understand this is like Josh before he became the blue-haired, I'm basically the anime rap god that you all see before you. Not Shizzy level of god. That's too high of a god tier. I'm my own god. No, no, not Richie Branson god tier. Please, please, let me be me. I'm my own kind of god here. I'm like one of the gods of destruction. No, no, not like Shizzy, goddammit. That's kind of like where I feel where Josh is elevated, but beforehand, he just seemed like everyone else that was trying to do stuff on the internet. He was nervous, he was shy, he didn't know what he wanted to do with all this stuff, and he was just trying to make sure he did stuff in a way that he thought was entertaining. Even if it meant like, I'm just gonna be like, super close to the mic, make myself kind of sound look very, very confident, make sure no one judges me super hard! To where he can go into where he is now with all the tour dates, all the conventions he can go to, all the stuff he can go to in France with his metal rap band, all that beautiful stuff that we all know and love today. In the best part of his whole core progression as an artist. Where you guys can already see from the templates on this side of the screen about top part being of course him in 2011 and him in 2017 about how the confidence level themselves actually sort of elevate to a higher standard about how Josh wants to do things. I mean, look at this guy. 
that just looks like a beautiful way to make yourself go into a better mindset for I'm confident, I'm cool, I don't have to be the shy guy on the internet anymore. I actually can be myself in a much more confident rate while still be a little awkward. And that's the beauty about how this whole review actually can culminate because it's a beautiful testament to where a lot of people kind of start off. Because if you guys go back to the very beginning about how this channel started, way back when, coming back to YouTube is hard enough when you don't have your fan base. And it's hard enough to try and build yourself up from just limited equipment to where you can either get the stuff where you just splurge all over to get everything that you need and make sure you never get anything off the ground or work with what you got to where you can be today. Because I could obviously splurge everything and be broke as fuck in about four days, get to all the stuff I need of the brand new camera, the stuff to fix up my microphone, you forgot a blue Yeti over there somewhere. I could get a brand new setup with my computer, no questions asked. I can get a bigger desk, get all the soundproof stuff to make sure you guys hear me do all the stuff of reviews, voice acting, all this sort of shit. But I'd rather just, you know, do it the same, the same way that Josh did in his whole progression. Start from the bottom, no matter if you're super confident or not, to become the legend that you're supposed to be. To become the hero of legend that braves it the entire storm that he can summon with just a single play of his ocarina or on the mic, whatever have you as the tool. Because that sentimentality alone is what makes a good track become an immortal track, something that becomes the staple for what is, what makes this person as great as they are. And Josh really is one of the greatest artists I've ever heard in this era of music. Does he still have a long way to go before he becomes the goat among goats? Sure, but that doesn't mean that his progression is going to halt. He's still making amazing music today, which I will review. Trust me, we will get to all his songs now. I'm invested. But to culminate everything, Josh, as he is now, is perfectly fine and he's progressing very well. It's just a matter of time to see where he will develop nowadays, where if he were to make another track to this, is like in Ghost Link during Twilight Princess, which I still think that theory is valid. Or he could just do other different Zelda raps that kind of culminate into how he progresses as his own hero of time in his discography. Whatever have you, he'll still be good. But that does not change the fact that this is still a review and you guys are tired of me waxing poetics about someone I don't even know! So, here is the whole shebang. For just Song of the Storms, the Zelda dub reps, parts 1 and part 2 combined, I can't really see myself giving this a very low rating, which is kind of like a shock for y'all, because when do I give anything a bad rating? <laughs> I'm going to give this whole entire track for part 1 and part 2 together, I would say 10.9 out of 13. And instead of giving it the letter grade of like a B or an A, I'll give it either a C plus or a B minus. Nothing for anything bad or negative. I just feel like it's the beginning towards something that I could talk about in a different review, but let's just say there are things I see that leaves me with a hankering that's also going to be a issue for my taste palettes for musical pleasure that I want to discern into different things, like an editorial coming out soon. Oh wait, what is this thumbnail here? In any event though, I will see you guys later on in some other music reviews I have lined up for you all. But there is one in particular I want you guys to have a sneak peek of after the credits are over. So I'll see y'all then! You crazy mother- I've grown too.